Okay, so looks like I'm the Lone Ranger tonight. Um, I'm going to try something a little bit different. If someone else turns up, then I'll go to a standard class. Uh, what I'm going to do is work through some exercises that you can do um, and try and build up a bit of muscle strength in different areas and then maybe try a few little different techniques. So this may not be the full hour. We'll see what happens, literally. I'm just going to start with a bit of a warm up. So starting with the head, just feet uh, sort of underneath your hips. So head to the right shoulder, let it roll down to your chest, come to your left shoulder and back up to center. And again to the right shoulder, the chest, left shoulder and center. Going back the other way, left shoulder, center, right shoulder, center, left shoulder to the chest, the right shoulder back to center. This time we're going to take a little bit further so we're going to take the shoulders with us. So the right shoulder is going to go down as we go to the right. We get a longer stretch up here. Let the shoulders and the head roll forward to your chest. Roll it over to your left and now pull up from the right shoulder. And again, drop the right shoulder. Roll to the front. Roll to the left and pull up from the right. Going the other way, so drop the left shoulder. Down around the front. To the right and pull up from the left shoulder. Down to the left, roll through the front, to the side, and back up. We're going back to the right this time, but we're going to engage the core or the center. So soften the knees a little bit, drop. So you're getting a much longer stretch down this side, so you're reaching down towards your calf. Let both arms fall forward. Let your body roll through the floor or the floor. Come around to the left and then slowly pull up from the right shoulder. So you should be getting a nice stretch up the right. Again, to the right, let it drop, let the left arm drop, brush past your feet, to the left and pull up by the right shoulder. I'm going to go the other way. So drop to the left, soften the knees, let the arm fall, forward, right and up. And back around to the left, forward, right and up. I'm going to do a couple of roll downs. So this is engaging all of your spine. So starting from the head, so breathing in. And as you breathe out, bring the chin to your chest. Start rolling your forehead down towards your belly button. Let the shoulders follow forward, arms follow forward. Basically, you're just trying to roll one vertebrae at a time down towards the floor. Going to soften the knees, straighten the knees, soften, straighten. It doesn't matter how far you've managed to get down. You're just trying to get a bit of a stretch through here. Going to soften the knees. And from the base of the spine, roll up one vertebrae at a time as if there's a wall right back here that you're trying to stick yourself to. So making sure that your feet are right underneath your hips, breathing in, breathing out, drop the chin. Start aiming towards your belly button. Let the arms fall forward. Roll it down slowly. Enjoy the stretch in your back. Soften the knees, straighten, soften, straighten. Last time to soften, and then from the base of the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Rolling out the shoulders. So you really want to make sure they're coming back as far as possible, trying to make as big a circle as you can. And the other way. We're going to open up the pectoral muscles, the pectoral area. So taking your hands, link them behind you, behind your head. And from here, think about pulling the elbows back so it opens out the chest. And just from here, just gently, as you breathe out, turn to the side. As you breathe in, come back to center. Breathe out to the other side. In through the center. Out, in, out, in, one more each way. Keep the elbows back out, in, out, and back in. Ooh, I think my, I'm not sure if my headphones are still working. I'm going to hope they are. So we're just going to. Pretend they are. 
and hopefully you can still hear. All right, so next we are going to go into kind of more the core area of the body. We're just going to do a little bit of rotation around. Just gentle, just as far as you feel comfortable and safe. You can let the arms relax. And just a little bit, one more, few more. All right. Going on to the hips. So starting off with just some small hip rotations. Uh, getting them a little bit bigger, so getting the legs a bit more engaged. So you let your upper body go with it too, so you can increase the kind of circle you're creating. Back around the other way. And just making them smaller as we come back. All right, going on to the knees. So again, feet underneath the hips, knees forward over the toes, just a gentle back and forth. And we're going to do the ankles, so just gentle circles. And the other way. Other side, round in one direction. Again, you're trying to make the biggest circles you can, that way you're really working the muscles. Back the other way. Shake it all out. So what we're gonna do, I'm just going to start with sort of lower body exercises. And these are just good for sort of strengthening all the muscles in the lower leg, the upper leg, the glutes. And that's part of what helps generate the power for when we do all of our footwork. So follow along, take out bits that you don't like. If they don't work for you, adjust them. Not everything is gonna work for everyone. So I'm just gonna load the camera a little bit so that what you're seeing is a bit more related to the legs. So we're just gonna start off with a basic squat. So with a squat, what you really want to do is keep the feet kind of at hip width. You might want them a little bit wider if that's more comfortable. The idea is generally that you want the feet and the knees going forwards, but you want the knees over the toes. Because depending on how your, your hips turn out, and your feet turn out, you might also need to just turn your knees out, uh, your feet out a little bit. But the key thing is making sure the knees are coming over the toes. So however wide is comfortable for you. I'm just gonna show you from the side, but what we're trying to do is just make sure we're hinging at our hip, our knee, and our ankle. The upper body's really not doing anything. So we're gonna breathe in. Squeeze everything up through the core. Make sure our chest is facing upwards towards the wall. Try and look forward towards the wall. And all I want you to do is just relax at the hips, the knees, and the ankles to create your squat. So your upper body is only really responding to the hip and the hinge. It's not curving over. You're not uh, bowing your back. What you're really focusing on is getting those three joints to bend. So the upper body should stay pretty stable the entire time. And as you come up, you really want to think about squeezing in through the glutes on the way up. A couple more. Okay. I'm just going to warm up the quads a little bit. So just to give them a stretch, raising one up. Keeping the knees together, you should feel the stretch up the front here. If you need to, you can push that forward a little bit, or keep a little bit forward, increase that stretch. And the other side. There's a couple of different ways we can work on the hamstrings um, and the glutes. So uh, what we're going to do now is what we call a deadlift. And this is basically about um, working the hamstrings at the back of the leg, um, so not the front so much. So what we're trying to aim to do is keep, again, always have the feet kind of directly under the hips or just outside of it, knees pointing forward. You're wanting to keep this part of your leg, so knee to ankle, pretty much where it is vertically. I want your backside to push out. So it's different to a squat. The squat's kind of even on all joints. A deadlift is the hips. Hinging back. So think about if you've got a wall behind you, I've got a 
resistance against the book shelf there. My backside's moving behind me. This is just staying where it was. You want to keep your spine engaged. You don't want to bow that way. You don't want to concave that way. So what you have here, try and keep it in that line as you come over. If you ever need to, you can always, I've got a mokuju here, so this is nice and straight. Something like a broom handle or mokuju, you lay against your spine. So you make sure it's straight. And you can do this with a squat as well. But as you go down into the deadlift, you can make sure that your spine is staying neutral. And again, as you come up, squeeze the glutes. So we're engaging all those muscles. more. Okay. I know that's not how you treat a mockadoo, but it was handy at the time. Next exercise is actually going to use a chair or a table. You can use a wall. You don't have to use this, but it can help for stability if you're feeling a little bit wibbly on your balance. Make sure it's nice and stable. What we're doing is basically calf raises. So again, feet are staying underneath the hips. Knees over toes, and you're always trying to think about keeping the knees in line with the toes. And all we're doing from here, squeeze everything in, try and keep the upper body from doing anything. You can use the chair for support. And we're coming up onto the balls of our feet. So we'll roll our weight forward onto the balls of the feet and then raise up and then down. And up and down. So really think about where your balance is. At the top, it should be the weight between the big toe and the second toe. And we're trying to control the movement both up and down, so not letting it just fall down. So this is working with what's called the gastrocnemius, the phalaeus, the, basically the back of your calf muscles. So squeeze everything through your body, squeeze through the backside, squeeze through the center. So think about pulling your belly button into your spine, just keeping it held there. So breathe out as you come up, breathe in as you come down. Out. And in, out, and in, out, and in. I'm going to speed it up a bit. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down, and up, and down. We're going to change what's working a little bit more. So we're actually going to bend the knee, but do pretty much the same movement. So instead of being so much the gastric knees, which is the top muscle, Looking more at the place, which is kind of the outside. So keep the knees a little bit bent, just whatever's comfortable. And now we're going to raise up on the toes and down. So you can see everything else is trying to stay still. We're actually not moving up much. It's the feet rolling through and which brings the knees up slightly. But we're actually working slightly different or focusing a bit more on a different set of muscles here. And again, these are the muscles that help generate that power when you push forward in your position. Again, always on the hard part, which is normally the upward movement. Breathe out, breathe in as you come down. Out, in, out, and in. So it should be feeling a bit warmer around the legs there. Won't do too many more of those exercises, or you'll absolutely hate me. All right. Again, looking at the legs, uh, I'm going to grab a yoga mat for this, just because it's a little bit more comfortable. And now you can paint me like one of your French ladies. We're going to be doing what we call uh, clams. And these are really good for the outside muscles here, um, which is part of your quadriceps, basically. But what this is doing is it's helping you to build up strength and control on the outside muscle, um, which helps prevent knee injury. So normally what happens when we damage our knee because the knee rotates in or out is because the muscles supporting it aren't holding it in place correctly. That's normally because we don't walk to work. Now. We're just going to work on a few different exercises for this. And it may not seem like much, but the more you do, the more you're going to hate me about this. So you can either come up from the side here, Lie right down, so go ahead, paint me. 
what we're doing is not the legs straight, the knees come forward, so they're a bit like this, like a 90 degree angle. The knees are in the front of your body, your toes coming up um, more in line with your backside, black down on the floor. And all that's going to happen is you make sure your weight's forward by rolling forward onto this front arm a little bit, that'll help support you. What we're doing is we're thinking about opening up here and then controlling it down. And I want you to keep your toes and your heels together. And I want you to think about this muscle here doing the work. The rest of your leg is basically dead weight. So this part of your leg, try not to think about, try not to use it. Try and push up as if there's something heavy on this part of the thigh, on the outside of your thigh. So we just open up and open, close, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Normally you could do more of these, but what we're going to do is do a variation now. So once you've gotten used to that, start to feel it working in here. Another variation is you raise the toes off the ground and you do the clamps, so kicking the toes and heels together. So one, two, three, four, so think about pressing those feet together. Five, still pushing up here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then another good one for this is we keep the bottom leg where it is, then the front, front leg or top leg. We're going to make the foot dead weight. So I want you to just let it relax. All the work is from up here. So these, the top of your thighs are in line. You're just going to raise up, let the front of the, or the foot basically block, and again pulling up against this leg. So one, two, three, four. Make sure your weight's rolled forward. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Should be starting to feel it a little bit. Um, depending on how strong those muscles are and how good you feel, you might do them in sets of 20, you might do them in sets of 30, um, whatever you like. We will do the other side because otherwise I will feel cool. So come down, basic plan, weight forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to elevate the feet. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring the feet down, extend the length forward. Heavy front or heavy foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Shake them out if you need to. So basically anything that's sort of working these legs, these muscles, um, helping to stabilize the knee, they're always really good for you. Another variation is based on hip hop dancers. So standing up, again, you can have something to lean on if you need to. So weight on the one foot, and all we're doing is we're extending out this out to the side. And again, thinking about the muscle at the top and outside of your leg doing the work. So your foot, your ankle, anything below the knee is basically dead weight. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Other leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if you have a resistance band at home, you can actually do it with that. Again, I do actually recommend having something to lean against if you're using a resistance band. It's a lot tougher. Um, you can do the clams with these two as well, but you might want to wait until you're really used to them and you need a bit of pressure. So if you're doing it with a resistance band, you can use this more for stability. And re at this time, again, trying to keep the ankle from engage or foot engaged. So it's not pushing with the foot or the ankle, we're pushing. With the outside of the leg, so all the upper thigh. That's what's opening up. Three, four, five, six. You can 
do it from a little further up when you're getting used to, uh, once you've got used to that. So one, two, and that can make it easier to make the foot dead weight. Technically, there's nothing to stop you doing it at the size as well. You're probably not going to get as far, but having that pressure there means you can really feel where you are supposed to be working. Okay, so that's kind of the outside of the leg. We're going to go back to kind of the calf, um, which again are a power generation. So again, if you've got the chair, all we're really doing here is we're coming into kind of a long lunge. So bent front knee, bent back knee. And all we're doing is coming off the ball of the foot and driving ourselves forward. So letting it drive you front of the chair. Bend, push. Then push, then push. So you're just trying to engage the foot and the ball of the foot to really drive your motion. Make sure you always do even on both sides. If you want to make it harder, you can lean forward a bit further. Or if you have a low chair or a backless chair, I guess it's a stool or a table, you can make a longer, deeper push. All right. So that's just a few things you can do to help work on your legs. If you want to do something for your arms, after thinking in terms of, say, Jukendo. One of the big things is the power on that front arm. So the left arm, when you finish strike, should be strong because if you're hitting a target, you don't want this wavering because you've got a weak elbow. So what is this? Gosh, I've nodded at you for almost half an hour. Resistance band, really, really good for this. Grabbing um, with the fist, holding one here. Oh, backhand at the sort of chest. So the front hand is going to start in closer than it normally would. Do this slowly because you don't want to jerk the elbow. So come from this position here and roll it over as you extend out. So the, the elbow and the wrist rotate in the same motion you would have if you had a mock chair. A little bit over the top on this one, but it helps to work on that rotation. So you can either do individual. One, two, three, four, five. Or you can just work on the endurance by holding it out. So one, two, three, four, five, and back. One, two, three, four, five, and back. To a degree, do the same thing in Tung Kendo, but you have a slightly lower position. So maybe keep the left hand down at the hip, right hand. This one doesn't need to rotate so much as push out. And so again, this is the elbow moving out, not the wrist changing rotation. So focus on the elbow, extending and locking. And like with the other side, you can work on the endurance holding position and then relax. An alternative is you can get some weights. So if you've got wrist weights, they're great. Just pop them on the wrist and just practice the motion or practice it with your weapon. Or grab something like a little dumbbell here. So each knee, again, rolling so your body gets used to the action. Don't do these fast because you've got an unusual weight just situated in that hand. So I wouldn't suggest doing this with more than maybe a two kilo weight. And again, only if that's comfortable for you. Otherwise, the resistance band is probably a better way to go. Any piece of left could do as well. Same thing for the tongue kendo side. So, firm grip, bend, bend. And again, you can just hold it out in position. And you'll start feeling the muscles start to tremble. But they are working, I promise. Which you should be able to feel.
and then bring it. So repetitions of these are always good. Just whatever suits you best or whatever equipment you've got. Uh, last thing we do before I show you some kind of warm down stretches is working on hip rotation for when we do our Irami safe pain on Kendo. So we have our left foot uh, forward, our right foot back. Um, so I always have my back foot a little, my back foot slightly up. My knees are always bent in Tang Kendo and in the Kendo because that allows us to power off. What I want to work on is the rotation. When we've gone into Irami safe pain, so imagine we're doing one from number six. So our left hand has extended forward, locked the elbow. So we're kind of in this long position here. I want to focus on the rotation from this back foot, and the ball of foot, hips forward and back. So hips forward and back. That's when we're doing our thrust. So from here, just coming back into your standard position, extend the arm forward as if you've got hold of them for Jeremy Seifei. And focus on the ball of your foot. So the heel comes up, rotate, and back. Rotate, and back. So think about pulling back to the left hip, and that'll help generate some of the movements. So pull back to the left, now pull back to the right. Pull back to the left, pull back to the right. Pull back to the left, pull back to the right. Pull back to the left, pull back to the right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right, left, right. So that's just a really good way to work on that um, rotation to help power up some of the area space. Okay, so excuse me one second. Water is important. <coughs> um, I'm just going to show you a few different uh, warm down stretch. Now, any kind of exercise you're doing. It's really important to both warm up and cool down. For warm up, what you're doing is you're basically waking your muscles up, getting ready, getting them ready to perform, so you're not shocking them into the, the actions you're doing, which is where a lot of injury comes from. Um, when you're doing your exercises or your or art or sport or whatever, if you're feeling pain, you should probably stop doing the motion. <laughs> Because there's something wrong. Either your muscles have had enough, like oh, you've done it too often, so over re uh, repetition, or the technique is incorrect, in which case you're creating damage and potentially doing worse damage because you're working that into your muscle memory. So it's always good if you're feeling any pain to stop and just look at what it is you're doing to try and figure out why it's hurting. Cool down. Is most important because our muscles have been active and we've been stretching them out and doing all kinds of things with them. Now we want to return them to the pre exercise state. So, again, it's not a shock to the system. So, normally do just a gentle movement to warm down, whether it's walking, what have you, no matter. So, the warm ups at the start of class can be a bit more dynamic, as in we're moving a lot more when we do it. So, skating, squatting, whatever it is. At the end, you actually want to do what's called um, static, which is basically where when holding a position rather than moving a position. And that just helps the muscles breathe back into a normal state. So we're going to do a lot of these on the ground, but I'm going to start with a really nice hamstring stretch. So this is this one to basically work all through here. My favorite, it's called it's a V hang. So you start with your legs wide, tell us why they are coming to you. And all you're going to do is basically put your body forward. So the legs are straight. And all you're going to do is lean over and hang the top of your body over. And what that does is that gives you a really lovely stretch up the back of the legs here. Depending on how comfortable you find it, you might go wider. You might end up with your arms on the ground. You might use them on your legs for support, wherever it feels good for you. All you want to do is just initiate that stretch. With any of these, just try and hold them for 10 seconds to just breathe through them. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So we're going to move to the floor. I'm just going to show you a few nice quad stretches, hamstring stretches to begin with. 
So that was the hamstrings. You can do a seated hamstring, which is one foot out and one foot either tucked in the front, tucked in the back, whichever is more comfortable. Back is usually a bit more of an um, extreme stretch. Keeping at the front is a little bit easier for starting out. So you have the one leg straight. You're going to tell the or push the toes back towards you, push the heel away. That's where you're going to start to stretch up the back of the leg here. And all you need to do is you can just lean forward, let your hand move as far out towards the leg as you can. As you come down, you're going to increase that stretch. Just come to where it's comfortable. And at a point where you can hold it comfortably, again, stay there for like 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Always make sure you do the other side as well, just so everything's even. Coming down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, depending on how flexible you are, you might want to do that with both feet forward at the same time. That's fine too, but you're probably not going to get it quite as deep, but it's good for just finding out where the balance is and which one is possibly a little bit more flexible. Side stretch um, does not have to be as wide as it is. Just, you know, even if it's here, as long as you're getting a stretch on the inside of the thigh, that's what counts. So basically take your legs out to the side as far as you can comfortably do so and feel a bit of a stretch. You can either just stay here, think about rolling the toes backwards, so keeping the heel on the floor, keeping the knees and the toes aiming towards the back. Stay up here. You can choose to slide your hands down your legs, or you can choose to slide your hands in front of your body. Wherever you find a nice, strong stretch across the inside of the thighs here, just hold that again for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. Remember to breathe. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Breathing is quite important because the more oxygen you get in and your calmer your breathing is, the more you're getting the oxygen into your system, into your muscles, and that's going to help them. Oxygen. I'm going to do a quad stretch. So this one, people have different levels of comfort with it. Um, so one foot behind, one foot in front. So it's kind of a little triangle here and aiming for a bit of a triangle at the back here so you kind of get close to the back side. Now, we're trying to get stretch in this leg here. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do what I just did, which is place one hand behind you. And we'll raise up so that you're pushing forward here. That also has the advantage of opening up the hip flexor. So again, you can hold that for 10 seconds. Or you might prefer one that's a bit more relaxed. So sitting around the side here, just let your hands walk back as far as is comfortable until you feel a stretch there. You may find that you can go down to your elbows. You may find that you can go down flat. But wherever you're comfortable and you're feeling that stretch, again, take it 10 seconds. Breathing in. And out. And in. And out. Don't want to release the legs. Coming back up. Change them over. Then try and make sure you, um, you're trying to get back to the same level as you were, so whether it was here or here or flat on your back. So try and make sure they're even. So come into position, feel the stretch up the uh, upper leg, and take it for 10 more seconds. So breathing in and out. And in. And out. Next one is what's called a piriformis stretch. Um, it can feel really nice, but again, if you find difficulty with this one, don't stress too much. There's a few variations. So the most basic variation is you have both your feet forward, your knees bent. Bring one ankle on top, uh, on the inside of one knee. So like that. Now you can either stay there. And think about pushing of this knee out towards the other toe. 
that's going to give you a nice stretch in there on its own. You can walk it in a little bit further with your hands to try and increase that stretch. You can bring the other foot in to increase that stretch. The other option, if, if you want to take a bit further, come down onto your back. Again, think about keep pushing that knee out and then raise up the other leg. You can clasp underneath the knee of that leg and pull it in while you're pushing the other knee out. And you can use the other hand if you want to do that. Again, just hold it at whatever stage is comfortable for 10 seconds, breathing in. And out. And in. And out. Changing sides. So again, whatever level is comfortable, bring the knee over, or the ankle over onto the knee. Find your base position where you're happy and if you're comfortable, do so. Push the knee outwards and breathe in and out and in and out. The last stretch I'm going to show you is the pretzel. This one I really love. It's a really nice spinal stretch. It's a leg stretch. It's just very chilled and relaxed. So this is one I'm quite happy to hold for a long time. Go on some meditation music, just chill out. So you lie down on your back, arms spread out to the side. If you bring your left knee up, take your right hand, place it on your left knee, and now bring your left knee over to, to your body. So it's crossed rolling over on your right leg. And what this is doing is it's giving you a nice spinal rotation, keeping a lo lovely stretch on here. You can turn your head towards your left arm to increase the rotation. And just relax into the position. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathe in. Breathe out. The longer you hold these positions, the more comfortable they'll get, the nicer they'll feel. Bring them back to the center, both legs straight, right leg comes up, left hand grabs the right knee, pulls it across the body. Now your head's looking towards your right arm. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Gently take it back to the center before you come up. So definitely not our standard class today. This one's a little bit more about looking after your body, a little bit about conditioning, um, a few different ways you can build up your muscle that uh, we rely a lot on Kendo and Tung Kendo. And hopefully a few exercises there that may prevent um, issues or injuries in the future, just because we're building up the supporting muscles around those joints that uh, tend to get a little bit frayed, as it were. They don't get looked after so well. A lot of times we teach the technique, we don't necessarily teach you how to build up the muscle structures around it to help support all of that. So hopefully this is a little bit helpful to you, um, even if you just want to do the stretch and the roll down. Um, and if it's something you want me to do more of, I can do these as a separate thing and just have a bit of a stretch session uh, or a warm down session. But there's plenty of uh, ones out there that throw in a good piece of meditative music to stretch in whatever way feels good to you. Um, but when you're doing the cool down, try and hold them for long periods of time. Focus on even breathing. And just spend a little bit of time, a bit of you time to relax. Um, and just calm down the body. So cooling down is just as important as warming up. Um, so try and make sure you do both of those. All right, that's 45 minutes of me talking about stretching. Uh, I hope you all have a good night, day, whatever, and I will see you online next time, probably with some actual uh, Jukendo and Tangkendo. Take care all.